All right, we're departing. See you out there. See you in a bit. Amazing. So the further we got out, it got slightly choppy. And at that moment where we thought, oh, we turned back, haven't seen that much wildlife, sort of about you know, 10 species of bird. Suddenly this this uh, sea eagle, they're, they're what are they, uh, Jose? White-bellied sea eagle. White-bellied sea eagle, massive thing, comes out just gliding across the water looking for fish to take back to its nest. Beautiful thing. I mean, I don't know if you see them every day, but you know, it's not something I see every day, that's for sure. Wow. Thank you, Jose. You are more Jose, than welcome. You've you, made my thank day. You. Thank you for made the great week, company. Probably. That was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Do you want to get some of this samphire for your luxa? I know. So, do you know, this is samphire. Correct. What we're standing on, this is a forest of samphire. It's a, yes. a sea vegetable. Yep. And I sort of feel guilty that we we walk on it, but it's, it's, it's acres and acres. Everywhere. It stretches all the way around into the little tea tree forest over yeah. there as well. Oh, yeah. I'll go for some of that. This, this is a, uh, a sea vegetable. It's a succulent. You can see it's got these little um, baubles and salty, crunchy, and really quite delicious. This time of year, sort of the end of the season, it starts to get a little bit stringy. But I reckon we could take some bits off that, make like little pearls of, um, of samphire and serve them with oysters. Don't even have to go fishing. This is my, this is my kind of... I'm a much better forager than I am fisher. <laughs> yeah. I'm very sustainable as a, as a fisherman. I right. don't take anything from the ocean, pretty much. And no, I'm, uh, out of choice, I'm sure. No, no, it's, out no, of, no. I'm, it's for lack of, of, of a skill. <laughs> Priceless. I've only been here a couple of hours and I already feel... 10 years younger. Invigorated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we've got um, quite a unique element here, which I'm sure you've already picked out. It's the rocks. Yeah, those red rocks. <laughs> yeah. They're all yeah. up the coast. They are, and in abundance. And that's because of the lichen. So the rock itself obviously is not uh, the orange element. What we've got is a lichen called Caloplaca. Um, now lichen is a symbiotic relationship between fungi and algae. With each lichen, you'll find a different combination of the fungi and algae. But what I find most interesting about the lichen is that the, say for example, fungi A and algae B that make a specific kind of lichen do not exist on their own. Mm -hmm. They only exist when they are forming, together. Yeah, together. forming right. lichen, yeah. which is really interesting. Yeah. And, and cool. why is it red? Because I, I mean, from my understanding, like most algae are, uh, are, are green because they're photosynthesizing, mm -hmm. and so. Uh, if, if, if you know the lichen is presumably should be green, like most lichens are green, right? As well. See, I my hypothesis is regarding that is it's got a lot to do with obviously the environment and what it feeds off um, would be basically what dictates its colour. Um, yeah, I think that's got a lot to play because here you've got a very sort of salty environment, um, quite a contrast to these sort of wet forest areas where you'll often find, I guess, your, your common, well-known lichens that, that people sort of kind green, of associate green with. Green yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a remarkable beach. The, the way you've got these sort of clumps of trees and then these sand dunes and right. rocks standing up and a lagoon and this white, white sand. I just want to... Oh, it's a bit cool. <laughs> <laughs> if, it wasn't, if it wasn't heading into winter, I'd have my... Yeah. Be squeaking along the beach, you know. Right. 
I just want to. I want to run in there. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> but yeah, the colour of that. It's probably just looking the at it from afar for now. The colour is just beautiful. It yeah. just looks so pristine. What's so beautiful about it is you do have to put in a bit of effort to get here. Of course. And when you get here, it's worth every step. Very much so. Very much so. I think if it was any closer, then it would. It wouldn't be what it is, you know. Having like a, a huge factor is the number of people here. We've kind of got the beach to ourselves, which is pretty awesome. I've so been like on a beach about this white in Southern Italy. Remember, we went yeah, to yeah, yeah. Southern Italy, mm -hmm. and we shared it with 400 of our best friends. And <laughs> yeah. yeah, and this, this is isn't us. just now. This is all the time yeah. in Tasmania. Yeah, this is all the time. You've yeah. got, you know, space to be yourself. Exactly. just remarkable but I think, I think what's really come home to me the last few hours is like I've been stuck at, a lot of people have been stuck at home I've been stuck at home a lot more I've had time to think and to reflect but but I haven't had a time to to really disconnect and really reflect on what what I want my life to be and I think you need to go away to do that I don't think you can do it in your house because that's where you that's where you do all your normal stuff, your routines, your you know, you're cooking, you're cleaning, you're looking after your family. The it's beautiful to be at home. But the only time you can really, 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 really rejuvenate is when you go away. And uh, I'm lucky enough to get a bit of a chance to do this. Mm -hmm.